Did I? Nope. There we are. There we are. Good morning, everybody. It is So Together Tuesday. I am Teresa Coates, and I am happy to be here for another episode of So Together Tuesday. So today we are back doing a child-friendly project, which is kind of fun. So this is a, we're doing the nappy bag today. We'll talk a little bit more about that. I want to remind you that uh, we do a giveaway every single week. So thank you for joining us. If you want to be uh, entered into the giveaway, We'd like you to share the video. You can do that via Facebook to your favorite friends, family, sewing groups, all that good stuff. Um, you can also share the video, I think, on YouTube. We'll find out. Um, so <laughs> thank you for joining us, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're happy to be here yet again. Hawk and I went away for the weekend, so um, I feel a little bit refreshed coming back. It's kind of nice. I feel a little bit more in it. So we're back. We're doing the nappy bag. I'm gonna, I was trying to fold this nicely. It didn't really work. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's close enough. So we're doing the little nappy bag. Let me turn off this light because it's blowing out weird. It is. Oops, I turned it back up. There we go. Ah, there. Okay. So we're doing the little nappy bag, um, which is a pattern from one of our brand ambassadors. She's worked with us for a long, long time. Her name is Pat, and she is wonderful. Uh, she lives in Idaho, and she has sewn with our fabrics for, I don't even know, probably since we started 25 years ago, um, or at least close to it. And so she is really, really talented. And so is a bunch of stuff. And she created this pattern a few years ago. And so we're going to do it today. I think it's a great one that is actually very uh, flexible for size wise. We're going to talk about the size of the bag tomorrow, but you could totally change that if you wanted to, um, if you were looking for something that was a little wider or longer. I really want to try it in adult size and you'll see why at the end. So, um, because it's awesome. All right, so the nappy bag is the pattern. It is available through cuddlesoftkits.com. So today we're gonna to be working with a few different fabrics and some different tools, a lot of the same stuff that we usually do. We're gonna do the D Digital Cuddle Girls Rule is the name of this print that we're using, and we're using the Cuddle 3 Hot Pink. You can actually use any two, like print in a solid will work really well. You want the 45 millimeter rotary cutter, self-healing cutting mat, of course. We're using them from Ulfa. Micro serrated scissors, I've got both Kai and Fomori, I love them both. 9014 stretch needle is always when we're sewing with Cuddle. The flower head pins are important because we are able to see them a lot better. Stiletto and pressing tool, if you have ever watched one of our Sew Together Tuesdays, you know this is my favorite. It's from By Annie, and it's great. Um, the, we're going to also use a 16-inch pillow form today. So if you happen to have seen this pattern before, it was done without a pillow form, and we've got some new variations where we're going to stick a pillow form in it and make it a lot easier. You know, uh, hand sewing needle, zipper with plastic teeth, wonder tape, and knit stay tape is optional as well. That pillow is also part of our giveaway, and Fairfield We'll be giving away a cu um, cuddle quilt kit and Fairfield will be giving away two, I believe, of the uh, pillow forms. Let's see if I can get those. Ta-da. All right. I think you might have to wipe the camera on the fabric. Oh, yeah. You think I've got a little. All right. Here. No, yeah. no, no. Use cuddle. It's better. Seriously, people. There we go. So much better. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so does we have to clean. And honestly, cuddle is seriously so good for cleaning any sort of glass stuff. Like it is really. We have a we have a pattern somewhere for a cuddle cleaning cloths. We'll have to find. I think they're from Pat too, and um, it absolutely works. The best things for cleaning your glasses. Now you know. All right. So these are the pillows we're giving away. All right. Well, Fairfield is giving away. We're going to use them in the project today. You can see how we use them, and um, Fairfield is also doing a discount for people who are watching today so there's a code it should be uh it should be coming up onto the bottom screen and they are giving 20 percent off of their website if you use the code for so together tuesday which will be there i highly recommend that you go get yourself one the pillow forms for this project but two that royal silk that i always talk about because royal silk stuffing is so good it's so much better than the standard polyfill it's so much softer and yummier and so i really recommend that you go to their website and get that. okay so that's my personal recommendations if you can get yourself some royal silk if you are a stuffed animal maker you will appreciate it very much and sometimes that can be a little bit hard to find it's a little bit um 
more specialized because it's nicer. Uh, anyway, so nappy bag, let's do it. Uh, so we have a few different things, like I said, that we're using different projects that, or products that we're using today that are a little different. We'll go through them when we get there, but we're gonna start with the fabric. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna take our fabric and we've got, I think it is uh, two yards and one and a half yards. So two yards of the print and one and a half of the solid. And so I've got those. The first thing I want you to do is to cut off the pillow part and the strap part. So if you cut, and I'm telling you this because I did it, is if you cut off the bag first and then you cut it wrong, your pillows aren't the right size. So we're going to start with the pillows and then go from there. The bag is more morphable. So we're going to start at the end. What's happening over there? Um, I've got a little window that won't go away on my screen and is blocking most of my camera view. But we're just going to live with that. Oh. Oh, well, I can't make it go away. It's free, and I'm the the option to make it go away might just close the whole stream. So, <laughs> and we don't want to lose you guys. So, we're just sorry. Gonna live with it. Sorry, Hawk. You're just gonna have to have work your around. Screen kind of covered. Okay. So I'm. This is my big two yard hunk here. Okay, and I am laying this down so that I can find the 18 inches. So. Normally, I don't cut fabric in layers. I'm going to try to move this so I can get it out in one layer. But I'll still have to move it because it's so wide. Okay, so I will do this in two. I won't do it in four because it's a little harder to keep track of where things are. Okay. So we were talking about this. We have a I Love Cuddle group. And if you haven't joined us there, I really recommend it. It's a Facebook group and it's super fun. But we get to talk about all the different issues that we have. And one of these is how do you get a straight line? How do you measure it? And um, the way that I'm going to do it here is I'm going to measure it just a little bit bigger because I want to take it and remeasure it later. So I'm going to need 18 inch squares. So right now I'm actually going to measure this at 19. Oh, you know what I did? I didn't fold it backwards. Darn it. Hold on, I'm going to see if I can get a little marker. I'm going to mark it on the front. Let me see, because I'm just going to cut it right there. Okay, so I'm just going to mark it real quick and then cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and then move the whole thing forward just a little bit. Because then I can cut this down. Okay, so now the hard part is getting this thing to slide together at the same rate. So I always kind of just fold this up and then yank it. Because we want those to slide together. All right, get that, make sure that's fairly even. Do my 19 inches again. I should be able to go Straight from this line right up yeah, to the top. All right. So now I've got that piece. So on this piece, I'm actually going to show you how you can do it with two, but it's not totally accurate. So once I've gotten this line straight, and I know it's straight because I just did it. Let me check my pattern. I told Hakam I have to check the pattern a bunch today because I want to make sure I get the numbers right. So I did a two and a half inch strip. So this is one of those rulers that has the little half inch here. So I have a half inch and then an inch and an inch. So if I lay this right, I can lay this along my cut edge and then my width will be two and a half and I don't have to try to measure that extra half in the middle here somewhere. So let me show you, I'll turn that around. So here's my half, one and a half, two and a half. I'm gonna line that up against my cut edge. And I'm gonna come in weird. I got that. Yep. So now I've got my little two and a half inch strip. Get some of that cuddle dust off. And then these are my eight. This is my 18 inch strip. So this 18 or it's 19 inch strip because I wanted to give myself a little extra room. So this will get cut into three 18 inch pieces. Okay. So I'm going to do that in just a second. So I'm going to put that to the side. This piece will become our 
bag piece. So that's going to be a whole other size that we cut. That's going to be a little bit funky. I'm going to do that um, before tomorrow, but we'll cut that later. So that's the excess of this. So if I should, so should this happen to you as well, and you cut it a little bit wrong and this bag doesn't end up the exact size that it says in the pattern, you can still just use it. It really just needs to be a rectangle that you can slide into. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So don't panic if you cut it a little bit too long or you've got a little extra, you could do that. Um, no big deal, all right? Okay, so now we've got this piece and I'm gonna take this and cut it into my 18 inch squares. So I know that the fabric is 60 inches wide, which means I could cut a square and a square and a square. So I'm gonna cut these two together so I'm gonna cut an 18 inch square here. If I had thought about it, I would have brought up my 18 inch square ruler, but I forgot I had one. Oops, sorry, they want magnets. Um, so I'm just gonna turn this around so I can cut off the end. So this is a digital cuddle, so it always has these little white spots at the end where the digital cuddle doesn't go all the way to the selvage. So I just wanna make sure that when I'm cutting it, that I'm gonna cut that off. I'm not gonna catch it in my, in my seam. So that's the first thing. I'm actually going to turn it the way that I like it from the inside. All right. Okay, so now I've got that laid out. So I'm going to draw my first line, and I'm actually going to go ahead and use a Sharpie since I'm on the back of it now. And this part is just going to get cut. So I know that my selvage my drawing kind of goes over so I can see it through here just a little bit I'm not sure if you guys can see that but I'm gonna draw my line and I'm gonna mark here's the bottom and here's the 18 inches okay so we talked about this a little bit last time I think it was maybe a couple weeks ago where I'm gonna take this ruler I'm gonna bump it up to the edge that I just drew and I'm going to square these off basically and that's how I'm going to get this nice long line to be square instead of just eyeballing it and hoping it's pretty straight up that side I'm going to use that so now I can measure 18 inches and mark my 18 okay and I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm going to slide this back a little okay. get that to line up make sure that these rulers are bumping each other nice and tight and that my line is going to match with the line that I drew before at 18 inches okay this should be pretty good I'm just going to mark it and then we're going to come back and make sure Not enough room. It's pretty darn close. 18. All right. Then I will measure this direction. So when you're measuring, the biggest key is to not move your fabric as much as you can not move it. Let it lay there. Get it flat. Oops, my mark already. Okay. And then it just is going to stay where you want it to, which is much nicer. So I'm going to line this up so that my marks match each other and that my lines are here and they're going to match the line that I just drew. I'm going to do that. And then I come back over and cut them out. Then I can lay that third one out flat and do my 18 inches again. Okay, and I'll already have a straight edge. And some squares there that I can work from. Okay. So there's that. And I will cut this. And then we're going to set those aside. So the pillow part of this, oh, I should probably show you how the whole thing works too, because it's kind of fun. So the pillow part is actually three parts, which um, is what makes it work really well. So that's what we need these three 18 inch pieces for. Okay, so I've got my little line here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually do it just the same way that I did before. And put these on here, line it up. 
other than the other than the uh, permanent marker, mm -hmm. uh, what is that other this guy right here? Oh, that's a little that? friction marker. So this is a little just a friction uh, fine liner. It's called. So I don't like the friction pens that have the ballpoint. So this is just personal personal preference. So I have this one, and I don't like using this with cuddle. It tends to snag on it. I don't like using this also in places that are going to show. So, I, but I think that it's really good for being able to mark things. And this does come out with heat. So if you're um, somebody who is averse to putting a a permanent marker on the back of your fabric, that's one way to do it. Got it. Um, another question about mm -hmm. your rulers that we, um, we're, and we're noticing that they aren't really slipping around too much. Is there something you do to help with that? I push hard on it, um, but there are a couple of different things that you can do. So the, this one here is a quilter select, which I really like. You can see it's frosted, so it will actually not slide at all, which is great. So if I put it on here and I, I can get it to like not move. Okay, this one is a uh, creative grids and it has these little um, dots on the back that are kind of rough. Uh, okay, I hear it. so that that actually gives it a little bit of grip. And then I don't know if I have my grippy up here, unfortunately, because I used it downstairs not that long ago. It's a product by uh, Odif that is super great. And it's a spray that you can put on the back of any ruler. So any ruler that you have, you just spray the back of it with the grippy and it basically does this sort of thing to it, makes it all frosted. So you'll have to redo it every, I don't know, while. It's not very often that you have to redo it, but it will wear off over time. I've noticed that the, the frosted from the quilt rulers, if you use them a lot, they will kind of wear off too along the edges. So um, I'm pretty hard on my rulers. So that's what that's what I'm using. It's, it's two different brands of rulers, but also that OD grippy spray is fabulous. And I've used it on all of my little ones. It's particularly good for quilting if you're using little rulers because little rulers tend to be really slick and move all over. But it's really good for this stuff too. Okay. All right. So that was a lot. Thanks. Yeah, if you have any <clears throat> questions, please, um, yeah, leave them in the comments. They'll get passed on, hopefully. And uh, where did I get the red erasable markers from? Uh, Michael says, and um, I'm trying to think. I actually got them from... I got it at the Stitch and Post in Little Rock, Arkansas. That's where I got it. And I was like, I remember I bought them just before I came back home. Um, and also what size is the ruler? The ruler is a two and a half by 24. The one that's the creative grids, this one. Okay. Which I actually really love this size of ruler. It's super convenient. Um, the six by 24s are great. This is even better. All right. So now I'm just going to mark it. So I've marked my 18, my 18, my 18. So like I said, I do have an 18 inch ruler somewhere. I could have brought it up and could have used it, but instead I'm showing you how we do it, which is exactly how most people will do it anyway. So you want to make sure that all of these marks are done before we start cutting it. It's just too easy for things to shift a little bit and not be straight. And it is really a point of frustration for a lot of people. So if we can control the fabric before we cut it, the better. So I'm just going to cut it all the way around. And I always try to lay my ruler inside of what I'm cutting. So I will put the ruler here and then cut along this line instead of trying to put the ruler here. One, this is less area to hold down, so it's not as stable. But two, if my ruler slips, I'm gonna cut into this and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna put the ruler here so that if I slip, I just slip off the side. All right, so there we should have Yay, three 18 inch squares. All right, so you can see that the cuddle mess is not very much on the digital cuddle or cuddle three. It's just really pretty, pretty minimal. I'll give it a good shake and it will come off. So now we have three squares and I'm gonna set these all together and just keep them to the side. And then we're gonna cut our straps. We're gonna take care of that first, okay? So, let me show you, before we get onto that, I'll show you how this works. So there's our pillows. Here's one strap. Put that over there. So I made this in two versions because I have to try these things and see how they work and I generally get it wrong once and I have to do it again, which is exactly what happened. So, <laughs> so this is a cute little nappy bag. It has um, little straps that you can put on your back, okay? 
So little kid sticks it on, wears it in the picture. It's adorable. Uh, if we had any little ones around, I would show you. But this is what it looks like. Super duper cute. Okay. Adorable. They can just carry it around. And what happens is that you have all of the pieces for a nap right here in the bag. It's fabulous. Okay. So you got your pillow, your little bag, you slide right in. Burp. Okay, that's how this works. So the first time I did this, I cut the fabric wrong. So there's there's a seam down the middle, which oops. Um, also doesn't you know affect it, make it not slip sleep very well. But <laughs> it does have a seam down the middle because I cut it the wrong direction. So let me show you. So that's the boy one. That is actually called um, digital cuddle champs. Is what that fabric is. So this is the girls' rock version. Okay, so this is what we're making right here. It becomes this little sleeping sack. Okay, so this is what we're gonna work on today is to get this all done and we'll come back tomorrow and work on this. Adorable, right? So cute. Oh, and you can wear it like a cape. Oh yeah, and yeah, you can. If you're, if you're Hawk and you're running around <laughs> the house trying it on, you can wear it like a cape. <laughs> he was like, I can try it. And I was like, I, it's made for a child. He was like. I know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He ran around with it. It worked out great. I totally want to try this in life with an 18 inch pillow and the cuddle sack. So um, I might just do that using these. Um, it'll be our new camp sleeping bags. Okay. <laughs> so that's what we're making. And it's, it's super cute. I really do. I love this little project. It's really fun. So uh, we're, we got the pillows done or not pillows done, but the pillows cut out. Now we're going to do the strap. So I've got the strip that I did of the print. And now I'm going to do the same thing. So I just need to cut a strip of the pink for the straps as well. You could cut it along the selvages. I did it along the stretch. It makes it slightly more difficult to sew, but it also made it so that um, the, the straps have a little bit of stretch with them because the straps are cut with the width. So for me, I thought it might be helpful for little ones to... Uh, to have it so it has a little bit of stretch. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this out as flat. We're gonna as jump can. ahead a little bit. I am okay. not the only adult in the room that would like to be able to run around the house in a cape. So is there an adult size for this? Or <laughs> how, are, how are you scaling this up? There is not, but I'm thinking, because if, if you've watched, if you watched, uh, when did we do the sleep sack? Like two months ago or something like that? Oh, we the did, shark. We did the cuddle, soft and cozy cuddle sleep sack or cozy cuddle sack. Um, I think it's what it's called. Soft and cozy cuddle sack, I think is what it's called. Somebody put it in the in the comments. And it's a really cute little pattern. It's a tongue twister. It is. Um, and basically, it's just a, a bag that you can wear when you're sitting and watching TV or, uh, you know, sitting on Zoom, all of that good stuff. It's super great. But you could totally use those measurements to be able to add the pillow here using her technique of putting the pillow together. So just thinking. It could work. You might just have to figure it out. I don't know. Buy the pattern. Do your own math. Um, I'll figure it out and we'll have new, new sacks. It'll be great. Okay. So I've got this laid out and then I need to go ahead and cut my two and a half inch strip. So this actually looks like it was cut pretty darn straight. One of the things that will make a difference in how I cut this. So I'm just going to measure the two and a half and cut it. I'm also not worried too much if this is perfectly even straight. What I need to do is make sure that I have two of the pieces, the, I can't remember what the length of the, the strap is. I need to get that, but I'm gonna get two of these straps out of here. So if it's a little bit funky at the fold, it's okay, because these will be the right size, okay? When I open this up, you might see, sometimes if you've cut strips on a fold, you'll see that they come down and they kind of back up again. And that's because it wasn't perfectly on the fold. This, we're cutting two separate straps, so it works okay. Okay, what to do with my rotary cutter? So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. It was a two and a half inch strip. I'm going to line it up on my ruler. So here I can see like it starts going off here. Cuddle is great. And then I could just move it around and make it straight. I think somebody noticed when you were cutting the other pieces that mm -hmm. as you're pushing with the rotary cutter, uh, it sometimes it makes a little ripple in front. Mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is that a problem? How and do you deal with it? That's What's when that you stop and of? reposition. Well, it's because the fabric is plush. And so like literally you're trying to cut through two layers of, of thick fabric. So it'll start to, to push up just a little bit. This one's not doing it because I want it to, of course. 
Um, and what that does is it'll start to ripple. And that's usually when I stop and I'll reposition. Okay. Because your level, your layers are getting off. It's the same thing that we deal with when you're sewing with it is because it's so thick because we have to get those layers to work together. So sometimes that means just taking the rotary blade off, letting it sit back down flat again and cut more. If you, the same way with you sew, if you let it keep piling up in front, what you end up with is a, a bad cut or bad seam because things are not going to be even. So whenever you see things start to get off a little bit like that, just stop. I don't even notice that I stop and do it, but I know that that's what I'm doing is when I start to see a ripple, I'll stop and like reposition. I'll be interested to watch the video later and see what I did. <laughs> I did it as smoothly as I think I might have. Um, but that's what that is. It's because it's a knit and it's plush. Oh, Monica says, I was talking about the middle of the fabric, not the direct cut area. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. Don't worry about anything else. Yeah. As long if as you marked it first, cut where the line is. Right. I mean, you saw like with the pink one, I didn't even unfold it completely. It's like basically wadded up. I just want the area that I'm cutting flat. And that's the same way when we're measuring. If you're measuring a very large piece, you want the area that you're measuring flat. The rest of it can do whatever it needs to do to fit into the area that you've got but you need the area that you're measuring and cutting to be flat. The rest of it, it really does have a mind of its own sometimes. All right, so now, let me give this a little shake. <laughs> it's snowing. Okay, so I got that off. Now, let's see if I could find my middle. See if it was a little bit wonky. It doesn't really look like it. So sometimes it will get a little bit weird, but it, I think this might be the, the center where it's not quite as perfect, but it's close. It is close. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay these together and we're gonna cut the right lengths. So I'm gonna lay these right sides together. One of the things when you're getting that cuddle dust off is make sure that you just flick it. Uh, I learned the hard way not to pull it as you're doing it because if you grab it and try to like pull all of the cuddle dust off, you just end up with stretched and rolled edges, which we don't want. Okay, so then I'm going to take this one. I'm going to do the same thing, fold it in half. And I'm going to place them next to each other. They don't have to be totally perfect, but I do want the edges to be fairly the same. Okay, I'm going to check my pattern, make sure I'm cutting it the right length. Because better safe than sorry. Okay, so 19 inches is what I want. So I'm going to, if I look at my ruler, my ruler is 24 inches. I got plenty of room. So basically I can just start whacking off at a place and then go from there. So I'm going to lay my ruler over here. I'm going to measure, I'm going to mark it against here. So this is my little line. I'm going to put this against the raw edge here. I'm going to check this up here, make sure that this raw edge is going against that line. It is. So these are basically even. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Okay, so then I'm going to measure down here. And I want a 19 inch, so I'm going to put mark there, mark there, and do the exact same thing. So this works way better than um, trying to lay them on top of each other. So laying them on top of each other, these backs will slide against each other and it will be really hard to get them the same length. And now we have them. They are the same length. Hey, could you could you grab one of those scraps back? Is have? that long enough to, if you, if you pull on that, will it do the curled edge rolly oh, thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. I threw it in there and then I lost them. They're in there somewhere. Here we go. There. Yeah. That, That's what that happens. Make, that makes whatever happens next really hard. Really hard. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. So if I try to like pull that off, it just ends up in a little tube. Yep. Okay. So that's that. Yeah. A good example because that's what happens and it's super duper frustrating to have this you have to fight this now so the less you can do that the better okay so i'm going to lay these and i'm going to put them right side up the nap is going this direction so i'm going to lay it so that the nap is going in the same direction for both of these okay it doesn't matter in the big picture 
But what does matter is that when we lay cuddle together, if the naps are going in the same direction, they're going to lay together nicely. If this nap is going this direction and that nap is going that direction, they kind of do this thing where they kind of fight each, each other like this and they don't actually like, they don't play nicely. If they're going together, they'll play nicely and I can pin them easily. Okay. So I think, so I can do like this and I can pet them. You can pet them. See, so you can see these are going that direction and you can smooth them out the same here smooth and smooth all right so these are going in the same way I will tell you that if you do it like this and you try to see if they're going in the same direction they're not okay this gets very confusing <laughs> so always try to lay the things in the same way that they're going to be sewn and see if they match this is particularly important when you're doing the cuddle strip quilts it can get really frustrating all right, so I'm gonna shift these a little bit. We've got some extra room at either end of this so that it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, the 19 inches. You can have some little variation, it's okay. All right, and I'm just gonna pin these along the edge. So I'm gonna do two at a time. So go up and back down. So I'm gonna do the double pinning. If you are new to our videos, you probably haven't seen this before, but we do this on almost all straight edges. And if you do this double row of pinning that's parallel to the cut edge, it will work a lot better. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I put the first row, I do the ends first and then I go ahead and fill in in between. And just make sure that these are nicely secured. So when I sew, the fabric isn't gonna move on me. So, because I'm right-handed, I always want to pin this direction, so I'm going to flip this around so I can do it from the other way. Okay, these are off, and I can see that, so I'm just going to measure and figure out which one is right. And it's the back one. So when I sew, I'm going to make sure and use that as my edge. as my, you know, my seam allowance edge. So I'll go ahead and mark these in between. Do some more. And these are the um, clover flower head pins that I like so much. And what um, flower head pins, the form factor of those, what about them is is uh, so special for sewing with Minky? Cuddle? So the, cut, the cuddle is extra good with the flower head pins because the walking foot, which we should use and I'm gonna make it just so much easier slides right over the top of these the other thing is this one isn't as evident because it's a lot of pins isn't it um <laughs> it isn't as evident because it's a flat cuddle but uh if you are using a like a plush more plush one one of the luxe cuddles some of them especially like llama and stuff you can really lose the pins in and this these are harder to lose with the flower heads um, and clover just has a really good version of them so, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew this. We're gonna put this one away and I'm gonna do this one later when you guys don't have to watch, okay? We're gonna come around and I've got my machine. I'll turn that light back on. Oh, well, I got it on a straight stitch and I've got it at a 3.0 uh, stitch length. All right, just a straight stitch. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this at a half an inch. And make sure she says that, make sure. Like, trying to follow the batter the way we're supposed to. So straps, do, do, do. Oh, use a quarter, oh, sorry. <laughs> I might've got a little close to your head there. I didn't realize you were right there. So quarter inch, I was like, wait, I think she did it different. So we're gonna go ahead and do a quarter inch seam. Oh, excuse me. So what was that? So it just kind of tried to suck it back in because I didn't go in far enough. So let me show you one little trick that we can do here. Was this my scrap? Yes. Because trying to start on these little corners, I don't have much room and it wants to kind of eat it as we as it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch on this and I'm gonna go ahead and put this underneath and let it start stitching that. Nope, that's my stiletto. And then I have this to kind of pull to get it to feed through. And you do use your left hand uh, to pull the fabric from oh, totally. the back. 
Totally, because yep, it gets stuck operation. under there. So you can see here, this is what will happen. It'll totally get stuck under there. I just lift up the walking foot. So now, when I'm sewing, I'll keep a hand back here. And I can try to keep these in position so that they're going to go through. So if this gets bunched up back here, I just pull it back out and get it straight. Once it gets to a certain point, it'll usually kind of feed itself through. But every once in a while, it'll still get stuck. That's one of the, the things about this foot that'll do that. So I need to watch this because this is supposed to be a quarter inch seam. And I've got a tiny bit here. So it's going to end up being a little bit wider seam. Not much. But I want to make sure I catch that. And all the way to the end. I'm going to go ahead and backstitch. Not being able to like just reach over and grab the little wheel. Is, <laughs> it's a hard thing to get used to. Because <laughs> I'm like, where can I go? All right. So I'm going to backstitch here. We'll see if we can get this one to work a little bit better because I got a little bit more in before I tried to start going. Okay, I'm just going to pull those pins out. So I'm going to leave these inner pins in, and you can see I left them in from the other side, and I'm just going to leave them there until I get all finished. You can take them out uh, after you're done with one seam, or after they get back here, then you can take them out because that's no longer going to hold anything. I just tend to leave them. Sometimes they come undone. Hey, Pat's on here. Hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. Thanks for designing such a cute little bag. Thanks for designing all sorts of really cute things, actually. She's very talented. All right. So we're going to come right along here, do a little back stitch, clip, and pull this out. So that's my like little leader ender thing, which you can totally use. Take all my pins out. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this and I'm going to top stitch it. So this is one of those where I can get it part way through and then I have to start shoving it with other things. I had, there's my I chopstick. see a chopstick. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe get it going from down here. There we go. Okay. So the other thing you can do is sew one end shut and pull it through. But I tend to like to fight with it for some reason. Oh, Deborah has a great oh, idea to to uh, to embroider the name on the um, on the strap. Oh, you could totally the, do that. The, the the little's name. This is that other thing that I had. Darn it! I wish I would have tried this. You remember, like you hook this, and then you can like feed it through. So this is a fun little clover tool. So I guess I would put it like this first. Let's see if we can turn this inside out. I've only used this a couple of times on elastic, but I think it would work on this. I just gotta feed it in there. Click it shut the other direction. See, now I'm going to show you a tool that I don't know how to use. Because I'm afraid that won't bend in. That's my theory. But it might. Oh, it might. Tee hee. Look at that. Nice. Okay. Thanks, Clover. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Did you come up with some interesting tools? Oh, maybe not. Maybe it won't go in. I don't want to break it. If I break it live, it'll be embarrassing. Oh, I did it. Okay. So now but it would that come does through. seem to be about the limit. <laughs> that was just about the limit is a two and a half inch strap with a quarter inch seam. So that would totally work. I'm not going to bring it all the way through, but I'm going to show you how it would work. So I have to fight out the other end because that's where I should have started actually was with that tool on this end. But then I see things and I'm like, wait, I could try that. So this is the way this works is this comes up here. I used it for elastic and it worked really well. Then this flips. See that? See how well that would work? Look, I can do it. Do the whole thing and then do it again. Nice. Got it. So now I have to see if I could stick it back in that hole again. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. Did it once. You can do it again. Come on, little guy. I'm going to do that and then be like, oh, no, we turned it. Now I can't get it back. That would be terrible. It would also not shock me. Oh yeah, can't get it yeah, to pop dis this time. Disconnecting the uh, clip might be a challenge this time. Yeah, yeah, dang it! See, what I want is for this to be in and then clip it. I wonder if I can do it somehow. 
did it once. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I'm going to try these tools. Like, try I know it. it could work. I just had to figure out how it works. Try, try it until you break it. That's right. Okay. I got that in there. Okay. So that's what I did. So I was able to clip it while it's in there. The clipping it is the hardest part is figuring out how to get that to work with this. Like I said, I've done it with elastic where you just put it through a tube. So it was really easy that way because there was no twisting it. Okay. There. Okay. Wow. Around and around and around we go. Yeah. So we did that, what, three times? Yeah. It's like I did both straps, you know? <laughs> <laughs> both straps done. Not quite, but, you know, close. All right. So that is this tool here. This is the Clover Bodkin thing. Clover. Okay. So this little tool. I think it's called the Bodkin. Uh, I saw it the other day on one of those live sewing shows. So it's out there in the world. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clip a few of these and we're going to top stitch this edge. There's a little conversation going on about who this is for, um, whether it was for infants or maybe older older kids. Older kids, I think. I yeah. think so too. I, I don't know if anybody else had this experience or if this is still a thing, but in kindergarten, I uh, there was sleep time, there was nap time, mm -hmm. and you had to bring a little pillow and a little blanket with you and you kept it in a corner with everybody yeah. else's. My kids do, did it during preschool. And so I'm sure it still happens in some ways. It's great to be able to like take over to, you know, grandma and grandpa's house or for you, like if your grandma and grandpa to have it, it'd be there just waiting for the kids. And it's a great place to take a little nap, curl up on the couch. I definitely see it as being like maybe like three to eight, maybe that age. Or okay. you're three, to, three to 40. Three, three to 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, so I'm going to go ahead and move this. I do want to make sure that as this is sewing, I'm not letting it twist at all. Sorry. Just make sure that's out. The Wonder Clip is trying to trying to attack my my digital dual feed back there. The digital dual feed is um, specific to Baby Lock. Is that yeah. correct? Got it. Yeah, the um, brothers have a move it foot, which is basically the same thing, but the digital dual feed. And then on your exactly. and then on your Bernina, um, they it's have a walking, a walking foot. foot. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep, the Janome has a walking foot. Yeah, this works a little bit differently, but I really like it. So with this seam too, I wanted to remind you that it is a polyester thread that we're using, and I'm going to come up here, just go across the end. And that will help it. So even though this is on the stretchy side of the fabric, we shouldn't have any trouble with it having to stretch a little. All right. So if I used a cotton, that thread would likely pop. But I'm using a polyester, which will give it a little bit of added strength and some stretchability. Pat was mentioning earlier, actually, that um, uh not part of the pattern directly but she often uses a stretch stitch mm -hmm. with this part specifically because it takes so much pulling and tugging mm -hmm. um what are your thoughts on that um i think it would be depend on how much wear and tear it's going to get pat has grandchildren that use it and i do not so she has actual real life use with it mm -hmm. um i have not had any trouble with the polyester thread popping so i can give it a pretty good little stretch here and it's not it's not doing anything and you can see it moves quite a lot like I don't know let's measure it so if I do it here I can stretch it another three and a half inches and that thread's not popping okay and that's the Mettler Metrocene uh, polyester okay so there is Got a it. strap cool cool all right all right and then we want to do a little bit with our uh, pillows. Okay, so I'm going to finish that. We'll put that together tomorrow. Now we have the three, so we have the three squares that we did with three 18 inch squares, right? And what that does is it creates, I'll show you how it, and my brain works better this way if I have 
um, something that I can sort of visualize where it's going. So we have, this is one 18 inch square that is our cover. Okay, this is where the blanket gets shoved up underneath and kind of holds it there. All right, we have the zipper part that is actually where the pillow form goes in. If I can figure out what my zipper pull is. Okay, so there's the zipper pull. My pillow form is in here. All right, and then we have the front. So the front of it, we're not going to do anything with it. We're going to put the straps on it, and we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, so this one, we're going to set this aside, one square for that. Not to confuse the issue, but the strap is the straps are sewn in on basically right at the seam line. So they're actually in some ways reversible, right? Yes. You can just flip yeah. them around to the other side, and yeah. then they act exactly the same. Yeah, they're sewn into the seam, so they could flip this way or this way. Yep. Got it. Exactly. So that, and you could actually use a totally different fabric if you wanted to, like the, um, the one with the, uh, sports equipment, you could use a different color. You could use like the rust or something on one of those straps and then the Navy for the rest of it. Or if you wanted to use different coordinating prints, you could do that. Um, it's very, very flexible. Okay. So I've got one of my 18 inch squares here that I'm putting aside with my straps. Cause we're going to deal with that. That's a whole other piece. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to hem one and zipper one. So we're going to do today. So we're just going to hem this one first. So I have to first, of course, find my um, nap. So if I pet this way and this way, these both feel fine, which means this is my, my width. So if I stretch this, I'll get a little bit of stretch. I know that. If I pet this way, that's from bottom to top. So this is top down because I can feel it has the smoothness this way and not so much that way. Also, this won't have any stretch. Okay, so this one lengthwise doesn't have the stretch, widthwise does. All right, so I'm going to turn this around so that I have it in my direction, top to bottom, so that if I pet it, it's nice and smooth. So what I need to do now is to hem this guy. So the easiest way for me to hem it is I use Wonder Tape. And I love this stuff. Mine is covered in cuddle dust. Surprise. Uh, it's shocking, right? Shocking. <laughs> so this one has some wonder tape. This is wonder tape on it that has, you know, a good amount of cuddle dust. What I'm going to do, make sure that my nap is going the way that I want it to. Okay, is I'm going to put this wonder tape right along the bottom here. Can okay, I overlapped it a little bit here because the end of my tape was just had been gotten yucky. So you don't have to do that. You can definitely line it up with the edge. Okay. I'm just lining it up right along that cut edge that I did. And it's sticky on one side and tape on the other. So there are a variety. We're going to talk about a different product tomorrow um, that can be helpful for this. But this is actually, um, this one works just sticky. So some of them you have to iron. This one you do not. Okay. So this, then we'll take this little tape off. So the trick is to get the wonder tape to stick here and then we can just start peeling it. Oh, wait, I forgot to mark something. Hold on. We definitely want to mark it first because trying to mark it over the sticky is not going to be good. So we want to hem this up an inch. I kind of wish Pat were just like here. Is it Pat? Do I hem it an inch? Is that <laughs> yes, one inch. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so if I want to hem this an inch, it's going to go up two inches where this edge is going to be. Okay. So if it's an inch hem, two inches up is where the hem ends up here. So what I'm going to do here, this is actually what I got that friction pen for. So I can mark on this side because this is a white fabric. I don't want to use my Sharpie on it because it can show. So I'm going to measure here two inches from my edge, my little pen. Then I'm going to peel the tape off and then I'm going to fold it up. Oh, if you had done that the other way, that would have just stuck to your ruler right It would now. have just stuck to the ruler. It would have been bad. It would have <laughs> been bad. Good so, catch. Thanks. Every once in a while. Okay. And then we're just going to carefully put this in place. All the edges are even. Go ahead, push it down in place. And now I have a nice little even hem. Okay, so much easier than trying to measure the one inch and fold it on the one inch line. Just mark the two inch line and fold it up to the line. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and because this is stuffed down, I can just sew it. So 
remove my pins. All right, we're gonna go ahead and I am going to, let's see, we should put it on a fancy stitch, don't you think? I was thinking that. Think. Believe it or not, I really was. Okay. Serpent, uh, serpentine stitch no, or that's no? Not, yeah, no, it's over here. I'm, I always have to search for it. Here's the serpentine, there we go. So I usually do it up to a 1.6. So we're going to do that, leave it at the five wide and see what happens. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little lock stitch. I'm going to let it run along this line of my, my mark. Okay. I'm going to see where that's catching over here. Yep. It's catching the whole edge. I wanted to just make sure, because if I had to do this twice, I would, but I wouldn't want to. Well, I'll bet taking out a serpentine stitch is no fun. <laughs> no. That's, that's just I got not. a little narrow. Sorry, oh, no. <laughs> I started aiming for the wrong line, guys. Sorry. The stitch is not straight. You started talking to talk me about serpentines, and I started thinking about how awful it was to take the stitches out. <laughs> I got totally distracted. Sorry. Okay, so here we go. But look, it's a serpentine, so you can hardly tell. It's one of my favorite things about serpentine stitches. They're really, they're hard to tell if you don't get them straight. Okay, kind of perfect. Okay, so that's just the serpentine. Was it 1.6 length, five wide? Okay, just can stitched it all the way the around. Mm -hmm. There you'll be able to see that it's a little crooked, but not too terrible. All right. So you can see too how like wide this is, this like arc here. But if you come over here, this is where I first started and the machine was trying to like get it through. So it's a little bit shorter. So sometimes oh. the serpentine is harder to get the length to work exactly perfectly even, but because of what it is, it's really easy to hide it. So nobody will ever notice. So there you go. Okay. There's part two done. All right. All right. Now we're going to do the zipper. Okay. Well, yeah, you can probably here. stay here. So the zipper, we're going to do the same way. I need to find out where my nap is. So this is my nap going top to bottom because I want the pillow to all be top to bottom on the nap. One, it will be more comfortable and two, it's just better. It's easier to sew. So now we're going to cut it so that it's five inches from the bottom. We're just going to cut off five inches. Okay, so I'm going to move that. I lined this up against the bottom of my ruler here and I can just measure up one, two, three, four, five inches. Because we're not looking for a super perfect measurement, I can use my ruler and it's okay. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this. Five inches, one, two, three, four, five. Straight across. Okay, so now I have two pieces. This is where my zipper is gonna go in. We did a whole thing, a whole show on zippers oh, a long time ago. And uh, it's all about putting zippers in Cuddle and Lux Cuddle. This, putting it in the, um, putting it in the Cuddle, the regular Cuddle is super easy. If you put it in Lux Cuddle, it's a little bit more challenging, but it's not bad here. Oops, I don't need to turn that over yet. All right, so this is how I want my zipper to go in. I used my white zipper, so we're gonna use a gray zipper, and uh, it'll make it easy to see, right? So yeah, yeah, exactly. It right. Makes it easy it's to see. Good, good, so, good for the camera. <laughs> exactly. So this is the same kind that I used last week. It's a by Annie zipper. I really like her zippers. They tend to be a little bit wider, which is nice. They have good pulls. This has a double pull, so I'm just gonna actually cut some off because I didn't order another zipper in time. Okay. So luckily, I have bought a lot of projects to make and have never gotten around to making them. So. The zipper was for something else, and it's just getting used now. Into the stash she goes. <laughs> Into the stash, exactly. All right, so I need a zipper that's longer than this. So I will tell you, as somebody who kind of avoided zippers for a while, one of the things that I found that makes it the easy, much, much easier to do is to have it wider than what you're doing. So we're doing an 18-inch pillow. Don't buy an 18-inch zipper. Buy a 22 or a 24-inch zipper. Then you just have some play here, and you can put the little metal bit past the end of it on either side if you have one of those zippers um, or just have some extra room. So I really recommend getting a bigger zipper to deal with. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off. If I can, there we go. 
Look, I have a whole other ruler because it was a double, double sided, or another zipper because it was double. Oh, yeah. Bonus zipper. Bonus zipper. Who knew? Okay. So now I've got my zipper. I want to make sure and not pull it off the end. We have dealt with that before. It is not fun. The other thing you could do is if I had it here, I would just put a little safety pin in here. And you can just safety pin that close so it doesn't, um, you don't accidentally fly off the, the end. That's right. never happened live it's never on happened. the show. No, not once. <laughs> not once, maybe <laughs> twice. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. you know, that, that zipper episode that, that she mentioned earlier, yeah, yeah, that was... I think that's exactly what I did there. There was a zipper flinging yeah. section. <laughs> was not good. That so I'm going to take my funny. Wonder Tape again, and I'm just going to put it right along the edge of my zipper tape. So this might be slightly confusing because it's on the cuddle but it's actually on the zipper tape that I'm putting in. Okay. You saw it got a little hump from where the zipper pull was. So I just move that out of the way and then I keep going. So I'm just going to get this all along the edge. It's probably going to go over bigger than I need. And that is okay. I would rather have too much than too little. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing I think you could use. Look at that pressing tool. Thanks, Annie. Nice. That actually works much better than my finger, which is usually what I try to use. All right. So now I've got that one on. I'm going to do the other side the exact same way. We don't usually do a ton of shout outs, but uh, hi, Maria Teresa Loria <laughs> from Italy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I She's remember watched a few seeing times. you here before. Yeah. Yeah, thank nice you. Nice to see you. All right. So we're going to put this one down the same way. And again, you can see like this gets weird. And so now to try to get this around straight around this bit, blah, not fun. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to move my zipper pull and then move it toward the end that I can't pull it off of and also where I've already been. Okay. So again, this is Wonder Tape. This is a Dritz project, product, actually. And I love Wonder Tape. They have a couple of different variations. They might all wash out now. They didn't for a while, but uh, yeah, they're... Super great. I love Wonder Tape. And I think it comes in, a, maybe it comes in a couple of different widths. This is just one I use all the time. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Get that to smush down. Why have I not thought about using this before? This is great. I think I was just so enamored with the tip of the stiletto. Oh, right? yes, I was like, I don't care what else it does. And, pre and pressing tool. <laughs> and pressing tool. I mean, she right says there. it. It's in the name. Amazing. Okay. So now I've got this <laughs> in there. So what I want to do is attach these. So I'm going to start with the smaller one first because it's usually easier. And do the same thing. Catch the sticky part. And now I'm going to put this onto my cuddle. Get that out of the way. And because I've cut it too long, I've got some extra in there, which is fab. Okay. I'm just going to go along here, press it really carefully. Make sure that my cuddle is not bending up or anything weird, not getting any little puckers in there. Pressing it down. Okay, getting that all to adhere very nicely. So now we're going to push this up a long way not off the end. Okay. So if you do it long enough, you could push it right off the end, but I'm a little afraid to right now because I have done that before. So I'm going to take this over and I'm going to use the quarter inch mark on my foot and do a stitching line down here. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and switch it back oops, over here to a straight stitch. And then again, putting it up to a three. All right, and I'm going to use my stiletto to keep it as straight as I can through here. I'm just continuing to use my dual feed. You could switch to a zipper if you want to. I don't have too much trouble as long as I'm going nice and slowly here. And I don't try to, yeah, hurry too much. Okay, I'm just going to stitch nice and slow right along here. Thank you. So when I get up to the zipper pull, I'm going to have to uh, switch that around and move that out of the way. Okay. The other thing is if you have, if you tend to be a lead foot when you're sewing, 
check your machine to see if you have a speed thing and don't feel ashamed to lower the speed so that for these things you can sort of take it nice and slow. So I'm going to see if I can do the thing that always is the frustrating part. And if you are a sewer and have done zippers at all, you know, this is frustrating. So we're going to try to move this back here. And it always has to come in front of the foot. There we go. Oh, okay. Nice. So if you, if you have three arms, it'd be really easy because you need to hold it here, hold it here, and then lift this guy a little extra. So see if I lift that, look how much extra that gives me under there. Boop. I could totally do that, but I don't have three arms. So I just try to struggle with it. So if you ever hear me call in, Hawk, and be like, could you lift this? It's because I'm really struggling with a zipper foot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to cut that. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other. So this one, you could actually go ahead and top stitch this down. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna leave it and it worked totally fine because this is pulling away. So if I were using a Lux cuddle, I would definitely want to try to stitch it, hold it back somehow, do some top stitching. If you watch the zipper video, we do talk about it a little. With the cuddle, this cuddle, we're gonna hold it so that this zipper is gonna stay open and it'll be fine. So I'm actually gonna leave it just like that. And then I'm going to come back over here, do the same thing, if I can. I have to put my reading glasses on because I can't see what I'm doing and I'm just trying to make it up and it's not working because I can't see it. Okay, I have to cut this again. Hold on, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't see for some reason. There we go. All, all right. right. Just struggle with it. We're all in it together. Okay, so then I've got this, uh -oh. and I want to put this on here. So the easiest way to do that is to just literally flip this over. Okay, and then I'm going to rearrange, and I want to make sure that these sides match. Okay, so that's actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna tack this side on here. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get this nice and even. Okay, figure out where that side's gonna be and it's gonna be just about there. Okay, so then I can work my way over and get these nice and Nice and even along the zipper edge. All right, so that's what I'm doing is just pressing this in place. I want to make sure that I'm not pulling my cuddle at all. I want it to just lay down nice and flat. This is one of those places too, like we were talking about with the curl, is that if you have played with this too much and given any pulling on it, it will have started curling on you. So you'll want to kind of backtrack out of that. See, there we go. See how it's going to curl because I pulled it up. So the less you can futz with that, the better. Okay. So here we go. Give it some good pinching. Uh, if you want to make sure and hold that, you're afraid that the wonder tape's not actually going to hold as well as you want it to, you could go ahead and clip that. All right. So now I'm going to move this down again out of my way. bring it back over and stitch along here. So I've got folded so that my big part of the pillow is here. Here's the zipper seam that I'm doing. And then the bottom flap is over the top of it. I'm just sewing this seam right here. So I'll put that in there. Do a little lock stitch maybe. Come on, why are you not moving, guy? There we go. Nope. Is it caught on? Why not? Oh, okay. oh, you know why? This. Oh, it was going through the tape. It wasn't going through the no. tape. It was catch. The tape is sticky. Right. So the um. It was. Catching... It was sticking. It was just sticking to the table. Got it. So it wasn't moving <laughs> because it was sticking. I was like, it's not like going anywhere. That's what it is. Bye. So cut off your, maybe, there we go. Nope, okay, what is happening here? Excuse me, I have to get up here. Yep, I want to back out. Thanks. There we go. It's catching on something and I don't know what, because I just did it on the other side and it worked fine. Okay. 
Let me try it again. There we go. Just had to give it a second. I'm just going to kind of shove it through there. Okay, so now we're back at the zipper part. So I'm going to put this past where I stitch. See, if I can do this and do this, <laughs> it'd be so much easier. It's all right. We got it. We got it. Okay. Okay. Well, my other, my other okay. hand is back there. I'm ready to play octopus. It's crazy. Okay. <clears throat> Just like the easiest thing is to get it as far in front of these toes as possible because the toes will pop up. So if I put the foot up, these toes have more room than if I try to take it out the side, which doesn't can't push up. So when you're trying to do, move your zippers, always put it in the front of your feet. All right. That's what that is. Gotcha. The zipper pulls underneath there. There we go. It is not behaving very nicely. Excuse me. I can't reach that thing again. Okay. <laughs> it's hard. I kept it. Like, I'm always in the way it. of her reaching for the uh, <laughs> the hand roll. What's it? What's it called? Um, I can't remember what it's called right now. The hand sewing advancer wheel thingy. Yes, exactly. That's what it's called. <laughs> you want to see? I feel like that messed me up somehow. It works so easy in the two other samples that I made. Okay, so now let's see if I caught anything. I didn't. So when I was sewing, I noticed that this part had gotten, this part had gotten pushed up a little. Oh, because I was sewing here. And I noticed that this had gotten short, that it had done like this. And I was like, oh no, if I caught it, I'm in trouble, but I didn't. Uh. So be careful when you're doing that, okay? All right, so this, I'm not super happy with how unstraight that is. Okay, so this got a little bit wonky. Um, and it's because it wasn't wanting to go through as nicely as I want it to. It does, I will tell you that it sews better when both, both um, the zipper is up. So both teeth are there, both rows of teeth are there. This gives it a little bit more solid footing than just the one row that it tends to like not be as stable on. Okay, does that make sense? So when it's two, when it's the two of them, this creates like a little table when it's the one, it just creates an edge. So your foot wants to wobble on it more. So I will have better luck. I'll show you. My guess is I'm going to have a lot better luck if I sew over this seam one, once more to get it straight right here with the zipper closed. Oh, somebody mentioned that a knee lift would help you with the octopus Oh, problem. it totally would help. But I don't have a seat either, and that would help with the knee lift. So. Yeah, she sews standing quite a bit, and this table probably won't accommodate it. Yeah, I have the knee lift, and I've used it. It's what I did when I did all the quilting. Oh yeah, recently when we moved this machine down onto the, to the kitchen on the table. kitchen table. Exactly. <laughs> See, so that was much much easier. I got a really nice straight line off that because it slides over this better. So if you're if you want to do it single layer, the zipper foot is probably better. I like using the digital dual <laughs> feed with the the cuddle. Okay, but there we go. Look at that. Hey, Annette, I absolutely do feel like I'm learning new things all the time. <laughs> it is my favorite is. place to be right here with Teresa, <laughs> with you guys, figuring it out. Yes. Yeah, it's learned a lot, to say the least. It's been great. Uh, okay, so here we go. I've got it. I've got my zipper. Okay, so now I've got my zipper. I've got my, so I got my zipper 18 inch, right? And make sure that that will be 18 inches with the other one. Here is this piece. Oh, we might. Oh, no, I can't. I didn't do the other strap. I was like, we might be able to do it. Okay. So these are going to go together. This will get stretched just a little bit. So let me show you how this works. I'll do the straps. We'll put this all together tomorrow. So if I lay this together, I can almost get this to be the same size, which if you remember, they're not supposed to be the same size. This is a whole inch turn under, right? But if I pull these apart, get the zipper up there, but not off the end, okay? I can pull these apart 
so that then I have my inch back. All right, so when we're sewing, we need to be really careful of that, that this is actually pulled open. So the amount that we've cut off, there should be about a half an inch or a little bit more in here. That's what that gap should be. All right, so we'll explain that a little bit more tomorrow, but these will all even out. Okay, so we're going to put these together. I will finish my other strap tonight. Okay, so we've got one strap. I'll do another strap. Tomorrow we'll come back, we'll put this pillow together, and then we'll put the bag together. And I will have the bag mostly made. Um, you can go around front now. So the bag is done um, basically the same way as the cuddle sack was done. So I'm not gonna show all of that whole process. There's a little bit at the top where it has the little, um, oops, the little flap. So this, this is a cute, so this is a variation on, or the cuddle sack is sort of like a variation on this. This one has a cute little flip down, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So you could make this so that it came all the way to the top. We're gonna do it like this and I'll show you how to do that. Otherwise it's very similar to the cuddle sack. So I'm not gonna show, walk you through all of that because we have another video that shows how to do it. So we'll go through some of it tomorrow. I'll show you how to put the whole thing together. We'll stick a pillow in it and you know, Hawk will run around Hawk the house around with the a cape. Okay. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> with a very um, There has been a request. Cape. So um, <laughs> it really did fit on it, which I thought was adorable. So uh, we'll finish it up tomorrow. We'll make the whole thing. So at this point, if you're going to work along with me, and I know a few people had um, had gotten the pattern so that they could do that. And don't forget, you can download the pattern from CuddlesoftKits.com. Um, if you want to do that, we're going to want to have the straps ready, that one piece hemmed, the one with the zipper in, and then the straps ready to go okay so we're gonna have all of those the three squares and the two straps and then we'll have a bag okay we'll put it all together that'll be tomorrow so we'll be back again 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and uh, we will finish doing that I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube make sure that you are getting notifications when we're doing it and when we're going live as well as joining our I love cuddle fabric um, Facebook group so we have a winner for today we have a cuddle strip quilt that we'll be giving away plus two pillows and that goes to Peggy A. So thank you so much for joining us, for sharing and um, for being a part of our well, Sew Together fam. So thanks for being here. I appreciate everyone who has joined us. We will see you tomorrow. Till then, happy sewing. Bye.